this is Pastor Tim. Welcome to this week's study guide. We began a new series called Worship. There's nothing more important in life than worshiping God. That's why we were made. And so we want to do it right. So what we want to do in this series is to look at what worship is, what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and how we can adjust. And so we're looking forward to unpacking some of these. We start by looking at the purest form of worship, and we find that certainly in the scriptures when we eliminate the earthly, sinful, fallen men, and we look at the heavenly scenes, we can think of Isaiah chapter 6. But today, we're talking about Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 5. And if you watch the message, you'll know that there were four songs, at least corporate responses, where everybody's saying or singing something together in these scenes. This takes place in the throne room of heaven. John is called up. And he's there with God and he's seeing all the things that go on. And so we're going to take each one of these scenes and let me just tell you right up front, the questions for each one of these scenes are going to be about the same. Who's worshiping? Who's being worshipped? Why are they worshiping? And how are they worshiping? So let's take these one at a time and then we'll give you time to answer those. And again, just a warning, you're going to do that five times. All right, here we go. Let's start with the first one, Revelation chapter 4. In verse 8, we find this. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. Day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Wow, what a sight. What a scene when you have these when you have these angelic beings of some sort that are the mightiest creatures in the universe. And they are around the throne, and they are hollering out together in one accord, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. So let's just pause then and ask ourselves the following questions about this scene. Who is worshiping? Who are they worshiping? And why are they worshiping? The scene continues in chapter 4, verse 9. Let's read that together. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to Him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders fall down before Him who sits on the throne and worship Him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and they say, You are worthy, our Lord and God. To receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. By your will they were created and have their being. So now we see these living creatures are joined by 24 elders. As we mentioned in the message, this is maybe representative of the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles, Old and New Testament, the leaders that are representing the entire family of believers are there on thrones and it's Except in this, they leave their thrones. They join with those living creatures, and, and then they worship. And so let's just talk again about, about, about what we see in this passage. So here are the questions. Who is worshiping? How are they worshiping? And why are they worshiping? So... Obviously, this is the same person. The passage flows right from the previous one. It's the same person. It's the same being that's on the throne, and that is God the Father. God the Father is on the throne. We see the living creatures surrounding the throne, and then all of a sudden, these 24 elders representing humankind, believers, human believers, are there around the throne, and they're worshiping God the Father. And so, how are they doing that? Well, we see what they're doing. They get off their own thrones, they fall down, they throw their own crowns, which is their own righteousness, all that they've ever earned, all that they ever possess, is there at His feet, and they are proclaiming, they are pro proclaiming that He is the one who is worthy to receive glory. They are not. By casting down their crowns, they are giving glory to God and deflecting the glory from themselves. Let's move on to the next passage. We go to chapter 5. The same scene, the same location, except it's building upon itself. Here we go, chapter 5, verse 7. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. 
Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll, to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. So, here we have in this passage somebody else that's on the throne. Who is that? And who is now worshiping? And why are they worshiping? So let's just pause and ask ourselves that question. Who's being worshipped? Who's doing the worshiping? How are they worshiping? And why are they worshiping? So it's apparent in this passage that there is somebody new, and that is the Lamb. We know throughout Scripture that Jesus Christ is the Lamb. John the Baptist, for instance, said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So all of a sudden, these same people now turn their attention to the Christ, to Jesus. And they say, You are worthy. And what's He worthy of? Praise and glory and honor. He is worthy. Why? Because He was slain. And it was His blood that made us have access to God and bought us back for God. So Jesus and the Father are one, they are there together, they're two distinct persons. We see earlier in the passage that the Spirit of God is before the throne. We see three distinct persons in this scene, and we see the worship now going out, and that Jesus Christ is worthy of all the praise and honor and glory. And so, seamlessly with the Father, the Son receives our worship. Therefore, all of our worship ought to be through the Son and in His name. And so we continue with this scene and it gets even more fascinating. Let's move forward. In chapter 5, verse 10, they go on and they say, You have made them to be a kingdom and priest to serve our God, and they will reign upon the earth. And then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousands times ten thousands. They encircled the throne and living creatures and elders, and in a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. And so we, we're going to ask ourselves the same question. So notice again, the living creatures are there around the throne from the previous verses. The elders are already there, fallen down, casting their crowns, and now... They're joined by a myriad of angels who all join in on praising the Lamb. So again, let's ask ourselves the question, who is worshiping? Who is being worshipped? How are they worshiping? And why are they worshiping? Finally, we go to chapter 5, verse 13. Again, the scene's continuing, and we have a fifth song, a fifth unison of praise that's coming now. Let's look at that verse, at chapter 5, verse 13, and let's read it together. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. <laughs> this is amazing. This is the culmination of everything that has breath praising the Lord. Did you see it again? Every creature in heaven and on earth that is under the earth in the sea Every breathing, living thing is giving praise to the Lamb who is on the throne and to God the Father. And so they're both being glorified by everyone. And what an amazing thing to see. So when all of these join in, the living creatures who were there at the first say, Amen. Absolutely. What you're saying is right. What you're saying is we agree with. And the humans who are 
saved, those who belong to Christ, who belong to God, those 24 elders who represent all the believers, are still throwing their crowns down and saying, you are worthy. What an amazing, incredible scene. And the question for you and me is, who's worshiping? Why are they worshiping? Who are they worshiping? And how are they worshiping? And so that leads us to the final question. In all but one of these songs, and they have already been previously doing it whenever this new song comes about, we see it says that they fell down on their face. And so the word proskuneo, which is the Old Testament word for worship, is a picture of falling on our face. Why do you think that worship involves falling on our face? Now let me just say, that was a symbolic gesture in that time that had particular meaning in those days. We might not share the same kind of understanding of that today, but there's something going on when they fall down. Why do you think they did it? And how do we replicate that in our worship? I hope that you've enjoyed today's study. And I hope that you think more through what worship really is. Because God has called you and me to be worshipers. And we're to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And I can see no plainer, clearer picture of what that's supposed to look like than this. I hope that we can reflect that in our life and in our church. God bless you.